everyone. Welcome to The Path of Me. I'm your host, Wendy Hutchinson. And my guest today is an incredible artist. He's an artist of many mediums. He's a photographer, um, plays music. He's a yoga instructor, a coach. And he really also takes his yoga practice off the mat by living the art of breathing and being fully present in any given moment. He's such a gift to all of us who know him. His name is Bhavan Misra. Welcome, Bhavan. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Wendy. Great to be Namaste. here. Namaste. What a blessing to have you today. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. Yeah, I met Bhavan. He was a, a, did some photography work for me and he has such a gift of actually capturing the energy of the individual and the essence which I gosh it's like magic there's something that you work your magic when you're behind the lens so it's been such an honor to know you uh, the past couple of years thank you I feel the same way yeah so let's talk a little bit about your journey I know you weren't always a photographer you went kind of through traditional channels of getting your education. You got a master's in, was it counseling? Mm -hmm. I think. Held a traditional job, corporate job. So what unfolded there and what led you to pursue photography more than stay in your mainstream type of corporate? Okay. Um, I'm, I've always been an artist. I've always liked drawing and <clears throat> illustration, and uh, I've always dabbled with photography. Even in high, it started off in high school. I was developing film and, and using chemicals to do exposures, and that's where I really. <laughs> yeah. It was. It came effortless to me. Uh, the first assignment we ever got, I won an award for it. Wow. And my teacher always just kind of encouraged me, and so that was that, you know. And I just kind of let, just let it be, you know, without trying to do so much. In, in that. Was that in college or high school? No, it was high school. Wow. Yeah, awesome. and then, then I focused on my education and, and kind of uh, bought another digital camera when digital cameras came back, came into the scene in college with my travels. And when, then I took a trip to Europe and I bought another camera that I liked. And it was a small, it's nothing professional, but I took some amazing pictures and I was like, wow, this is really fun. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. And so I came back and started doing it more as a hobby with more intention just to shoot. Did you have any formal like training, photography training, or is it all just kind of organic? It was mostly organic. I learned a lot in, that, in those two years of photography during high school. Um, and, but I'm a, kind of a techie, so I, I kind of teach myself a lot of stuff. Awesome. And then I just kept going. I just kept going on the photography path and shooting people and then people asking to give me money and me saying, no, I don't want money. I just want to shoot. I don't want to taint this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Please, we insist. I'm like, ah, you know, reluctantly, but eventually the pendulum swung and I started taking more income from it and I was able to leave my corporate job and sustain myself on it. And ever since then, I've lived that life. You tell me this cool story. It was this pivotal moment where you were working and you had the opportunity to work from home. So it gave you flexibility as far as editing images and, and then also working this corporate job. And so if you could just share that story, because I think at that time, that was definitely a pivotal decision that you made in your life. In a yeah, it, that, was a, that was an important time. I had came, come out of grad school and took about six months to find a job. The economy was down back then. Um, and when it finally did, I was like, I got this great job. So I started working this good job and, and living off of it and doing well. Sure. And then they, um, they transitioned me to work from home. So I was able to do telephonic counseling through the computer and, and that awesome. kind of thing. And that was great. So I would set up my computer and I would also have my computer over here and I would be editing while I was waiting for a call or, you know, something like that. Sure. And during this process, the bigger picture is that I was working a lot on myself and self-development and consciousness and, and law of attraction and affirmations and those sorts of things. And, uh, I began to vibrate my way out of the corporate world and I felt it coming. I didn't know what it looked like or even how to do it, but I knew that that was coming. I didn't know when or how it was going to take place. And they um, had asked me to come back in for, for some reason. And I said, no, I'm not going to come back in. And they're like, well, we expect to see you in the office on Monday. I was like, okay, you won't see me. And that was it. It was as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that's, resonate. That, that's exactly how it unfolded. There was nothing else to it. I uh, didn't go back into the office ever again. Wow. Was, yeah. That's so incredible. You're like, yeah. you can mail my check. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Wow, that's so powerful. 
So you had, sounds like you were on a journey of self-discovery for quite some time. Was there something that, I know you come from a Hindu background, is that correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, was there something that triggered that or was it kind of a slow organic awakening and, and coming back to the yeah, I think I feel blessed that I was exposed to that in my early years and living in America, you know, I mean, I was exposed to lots of cultures. I did a lot of traveling and so I get to see all these different ways of life. And I studied anthropology at one time, which is a study of culture. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but after high school, I went to, I went to university. I got accepted to this great engineering university and I realized at that point leaving home that the world isn't what they say that it is and I wasn't actually prepared for school even though I graduated with honors it was like whoa yeah. this is a big step back <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh pause I was like okay I, I came back home from New York and started again I, I, I was like I started my journey again to me that was one of the biggest moments is leaving home after high school to go to college but coming back and I started that's when I started to like uh change my consciousness I started evaluating my consciousness like bricks or items in a house, like what is this? Where did it come from? Do I need it or do I not need it? Okay, I'm gonna keep this one. You're and unpacking things from an early age then. It's yeah, like, around 17 or 18, I was starting that process. No wonder you're so centered. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's a like, while. It's like I woke up because the world around us isn't what I was always told it was and everyone else was telling me it was. I'm like, well, wait a yeah. second. All right. um, something's what, not was right. that, what was that like for you to start to change your perspective because we're so conditioned and programmed to be in mainstream thought, mainstream behavior. So what was it like for you to start to see the world from a different perspective? It felt natural. It felt like, okay. it felt more authentic to who I really am. If that's mm -hmm. who I always really was. I was always kind of a rebel, maybe a black sheep or, you know, you could I'd label it that way. Um, I just, it just felt more authentic. It felt right to do that for me. It didn't feel, I did, uh, it, it just, you know, when we're conditioned with these things, we can feel them and they don't feel right. So it felt good to like, let that stuff go. Right. I didn't go to prom and like, I was like, I'm not going to prom. I'd rather not go to prom. That's not my thing. When the school bell rang, I was out of there. I didn't want to be involved in extracurricular activities. You sound like my kids. <laughs> the kids felt the same way. <laughs> yeah. And everyone would be like, what? Like, that's weird. Like, why are you questioning the norm? Like, that's just what I want to do. Like, that's what feels right. I don't know where I got that from necessarily, but that's just who I am. So if, I'm, if you're living a life that, you know, our bodies are divine instruments of reception, you can feel what feels right and what feels yeah. wrong just by yeah. tapping in and checking in with yourself. And I may not have been able to articulate that back then, but, you know, looking back now, it's just living fortunate enough to live out of choice. As you aligned more and more with your truth, did opportunities start to unfold for you as you became more in alignment with things that resonated with you? Yeah, I mean, the answer to your question is yes, they did, because you start to create a life you know, with your thoughts and your, and your, and your heart and consciousness, you start to create a path that's different, that unfolds, that matches those vibrations. I think that's what happened. Um, they are, or they, they, they are opportunities that match those vibrations that start to unfold. That's what ends up happening. I, you know, I was going through school, I was in college. I moved from the math and sciences with the definite answer, yes or no, to the liberal arts with the interpretation. It's a huge really, shift. Huge shift, and I, and I loved it. I'm still, I still have an engineering sort of keenness to myself, but I, I, that's where I was able to discover more about who I was and more about the world, you know, from that way. And then, <clears throat> so I'm going through college, took a year off, went back to master's, did that just fine. Yeah, it was. It feels like looking back, it feels like it was a really slow and gradual thing. At the same time, when the after high school is when I started playing music and in a band and you know producing music that I wanted to produce. So there was this parallel journey happening of consciousness and leaving the real world and playing music, and it kind of all wove really nicely together. So awesome. Yeah. So that was happening too. 
Yeah. And you're still playing music today, which is so cool. You're still making making music. I think you said you just put, are putting something new together right now and working on something. So yeah, music's been really nice. It's been like my faithful friend by my side, and um, and I don't try too hard on it. I don't want to like taint it, I suppose. Um, and I don't. I just let it be, and it, it, it's there for me. And I get to create really nicely from there. I don't try too hard with it, but then opportunities do come into my lap. It's like great, cool. This is awesome. Finding the right people to collaborate with is really a huge part of that, too. It is. Uh, I've always said over the years that it's harder to find people to align with in music than it is to actually learn and play an instrument or even, you know, even get close to mastering an instrument. It's easier to do that than it is to align with people. The characters that I've encountered over the years have been numerous and amazing and they've all taught me something. Sure. <clears throat> sure. But yeah. I think everybody, everybody's a teacher for us. Absolutely. Right? That crosses yeah. our path. Yeah. So if you can learn that things are happening for you, not to you, and everyone's a teacher and you have something to learn from anyone. So Buddhism, powerful. Yeah, Buddhism taught me that. So powerful. And it's not necessarily the people who you have an easy relationship with. It's especially. That we have grown from. <laughs> yeah, especially those. <laughs> Sometimes it's the challenging ones that really are getting us to do our work, our inner work, you know? Yeah. How did you uh, come up on the yoga community that you're a part of? There was a, well, there's two answers to that. One of them, the more, more esoteric response was, hey, I'm living this life, I'm doing my job, but I don't have community. And all of a sudden I got this download that I needed community. So I was like, okay, I'll, create, I'll find some community now, or let's find community. Cool. So that was there, and then that eventually filled in. There was this other part of me, though, that I had um, a knee issue, and the, the doctors wanted to do surgery and put me on medications. And I was like, no, thank you. I, I'm not doing that. He was like, okay. Not used to me. But the, yeah, exactly. And, and what I did was I went home and, and I essentially healed myself through yoga. I taught myself yoga and I healed my stuff through yoga. And that's what kind of started my journey for me personally. That's powerful. Yeah. And so, those, so, so then so the community came in, eventually the, the community came into play. So now I'm practicing in a community um, and I'm and working on my physical, but I'm part of the community. So was, there's was two things being met there. And that happened in um, 2013, 2012, somewhere in there. And what pr- prompted you to go through the teacher training and become not just a student of yoga, but then a teacher? It felt like the natural next obvious step for me after just a short while practicing. Um, I was working at the studio, like helping them do things at the studio and the community members and other teachers and friends would be like, when's your class? When are you teaching? And I hadn't even gotten the presentation yet, you know? And the, the community had, they were identifying me as a teacher for their own reasons. And I started to take notice of that. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And I just, again, just naturally folded, you know, into that. So, um, when did you finish your teacher training and start? It'll, this October will be okay. six years. Six years? Yeah. Or this December will be six years, yeah. So amazing. Yeah. You know seems- you're awesome. You know you're an <laughs> awesome teacher. People rave about you. What's your primary message? What are you trying to convey when you're in front of your your class. Every teacher has a certain style, a certain way of being that influences the flow of their class and the way people are able to release things that they're holding. I know yoga is a process of self-mastery, right? But as a teacher, I'm sure you have your own philosophies and thoughts that you bring to your classes so maybe you could elaborate a little bit yeah that's that's good it's something that i've been in inquiry about lately because every time i step in step up in front of a class i have to ask myself what's my intention what am i bringing and what am i offering today and the message is one of love to give love and to feel love for all my students and let yeah. them experience that because I've, I've had some powerful classes where I just feel doused in love at the end of the class and mm. I, that's what I would love to be known for as well yeah. um, <clears throat> but that love Wendy comes from this infinite source right here 
And when you learn that that's there and it's always been there, then you have that to tap yeah. into and feel and to live your life from and not need it yeah. from anybody else. Oh, God, it's so powerful. It's so yeah. powerful when you can connect to that yeah. because you're right. It's like infinite. It's like this infinite well that you can draw on when you can tap in and be aligned. And it just gives you so much more to share. Yeah, it just, yeah, infinite yeah, in a balance. It just abounds. The more you give, the more it grows. And the more you experience yeah. it, the more appreciate yeah. it. So yeah, my my what I what I try to do now is give people access to that infinite that that self practice. They have the key. They all have the key. So I create a space for them to access that key. They're like, yeah, I love your class. I love coming to your class. I I get this and this out of it, and it's they speak to me as if I'm giving it to them. And I always have to say humbly, thank you. And you did it. It's your class. It's your practice. You know, I'm just holding space for you, maybe at the most. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. Well, I think we all know that you are a natural healer, too. You are giving people the space, but also your presence and your energy is almost um, has this effect of allowing people to release things. I think there's a lot of things that are released emotionally in your classes, and that is very powerful. Yeah, one of my friends has, has recently turned me on to the idea that, like, how are you defining healer? And uh, she was defining it as someone who incites the, the healing within you, the healer within you. So, mm -hmm. if you're, if, and one of my teachers told me that words can only go so far. It's about leading by example and teaching by example. So if I'm showing up in a, in a way that incites the, well, the healer within you, then you, you have access to healing those things that only, you know, you need to heal them. It, it feels like I'm trying to like not take the credit, I, but I really do. Believe I think you really need to because <laughs> although although you're a conduit and you're and you are, um, you know, allowing the people in your class to process and release and heal things within themselves, you're also the catalyst. So I think I need to honor you for being the catalyst for change for so many of your students and. It's a very um, powerful gift that you possess. Thank you. So I honor you for the work you're doing, not only in the yoga community, but also in your photography, in your music, because you're touching people in ways that um, it's, almost, it's almost to me as if you are fully engaged in what you, were, what you have come here to do. You know, I think people have these feelings about who they need to be, but you are already in a space of being who you've come to be. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. And I get filled with gratitude because it's a blessing to be able to do that and live that life. And it's afforded to me because mm -hmm. of my mom and my ancestors and my teachers. And it's mm -hmm. like I live a life passionately because they, they work so hard for me. So I have to live up to that. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't I have any other choice. Who's been an influential teacher in your life? I'm sure you've had many people who've influenced the direction of your life. You know, I mean, the first person that comes to my mind is my mom. And that's like an, uh, almost a cliche answer. And, and I don't think, and I was talking to someone else about this recently. I don't think she knows it. And so I'm going to make sure she knows it. But she, you know, she and my grandmother taught me and were the first teachers of unconditional love, unconditional, mm -hmm. unconditional so service, you know, and living so um, generous, like just living first for someone and working and doing everything for them passionately with love. And yeah. so I got to experience that and set the bar really high. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine trying to uh, follow in those footsteps. Yeah, yeah. I think so, you're doing a great job though. <laughs> I'll be sure she sees this, and, 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 she, and I plan on acknowledging her separately because I am really present to the fact that she has been a great teacher to me. So beautiful. Yeah. What's the, what is the um, legacy that you would like to live and leave through the practice of your art? You know, what would you like people to take away 
when they experience a class or listen to your music or um, receive the images you've created of their lives? That's a great question. I think um, the answer is I, I want them to know that they are enough and who they are is worth contributing from. You know, they don't have to change anything. Like they're, they're perfect, whole, and complete. Exactly. And that's yeah. why we're here. That's why you're special. You're special because you are here um, in the exactly. universe. And you're unique. So you have to give your unique contribution to the world. We're all waiting for it. All right. of us. So it's about getting out of your head, my friend. Getting out of your, your false fears, which are illusions. Getting out of what people are thinking about you. And living your life really authentically. I... Uh, I rock out and I'm playing the bass and I'm on stage or whatever. And I'm like full of energy. I'm like full expression. I'm rocking out. And I want someone to be like, man, like, that's great. You got to rock out, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you just rock out. Don't be shy and rock out, you know? And I've always been like a shy person. I'm not a big fan of dancing necessarily, mm -hmm. but I have a different relationship with music. I like to rock out. Mm, sure. I like to back, you know, and that guy's rocking sure. out. Hopefully that's inspirational for somebody. Yeah, absolutely. And, Hopefully, I, I, I feel like I attempt to elicit that in my photo shoots as well because I'm photographing someone, and that's usually, a, a, I guess, it's a really big moment where they're like, I don't want to be photographed or seen, and I have to make them feel comfortable yeah. to get to that picture, you know? And so it's a lot of, like, coaching before they even know that it's even happening, that, hey, you are beautiful, you're perfect as is, and everything's going to be great. You, know? you have such a gift at making people feel comfortable, but also, gosh, I can't describe what it is you do, but when you get the images back, because you've, you've done a couple of uh, photography shoots for me, when I get the images back, I feel like you see me. You see me and you're able to reveal who I am through the images and it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing that you, you are offering the world, so thank you. You're welcome, man. Thank you for allowing me that. To me, I feel like it's sacred and uh, it takes a lot of trust for someone to give that opportunity to someone to capture them. But I'm listening to you even before we even met. I'm listening to your, your words and your email. I'm getting a sense of who you are and the, I'm getting a sense of your market and what you want to convey, what your goals are, so I can create the images that are in line with that. And that's probably why you feel like, wow, this is it, like hit the nail on the head. It's not about yeah. let's just make a session and do a shoot. I need right. to get to know you a little bit. Yeah. There's definitely an energetic exchange that takes place and connection. What's your, what's your web address? And I'll drop it down below. So if people are in, in the area looking for a photographer, I would love to promote your, um, Thank you. Yeah. your website. The words user of reality, all one word user of reality you can find me on instagram on facebook and dot com user of reality dot com um, yeah i'll put the link below but also at the end i'll put all your contact <laughs> information you. Yeah, yeah. how'd you come up with that name user of reality uh that is around that time post high school um consciousness shifting consciousness reevaluation, mm -hmm. and uh I identified with myself as a user of reality. I'm using reality to do the things that I need to do or, you know, a lot. Of, yeah, that's how it happened. I get a lot of people like I, I, I struggle with the name. So I've struggled in the past with the name because it's not market friendly. It's not, I don't know what people, but a lot of people are like, whoa, that's so cool. I get it. And a lot of people <laughs> don't. I think it goes over at least 70% of people's heads. Some of us then, get it. <laughs> some of us get it, and it's great. And I just stuck with it, man. I thought about changing my photography branding name depending on who I want to market to. But now, no, I, I have an LLC under that, and it's fine. I love, I love that. I love that you, you've had that name since high school, like just after high school. So that, that has grown with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it literally started as a, a screen name for AOL or something silly like that. Oh my god! Wow. I know. Was I was dating yourself. <laughs> I know. That's a great message. <laughs> That's so incredible. That yeah. is so incredible. So I know you're also doing these destination weddings. So Bobin is available to travel. Has camera will travel, yeah. and um, he's definitely worth every cent. So if you're doing a destination wedding or you want somebody to 
to come out and just shoot some insane images for you. He's your man. Thank you so much, Wendy. That's so Beautiful nice. Beautiful work. Yeah. I love traveling and putting those two together. It's, it's yeah. So you've, you've spent a lifetime of traveling. What, what have you learned from all your travels? What have you learned about the experiences of connecting to all these different cultures? And um, I know yeah. your worldview has been shaped by it in some way. Absolutely, yeah. But I'm reminded by this quote, and I'm, I don't even remember the quote to quote it right now, but it's like, traveling and seeing the world is all about learning about you and who I am. It's all about a reflection of, it's like learning the deeper parts of who I am. So true. Yeah. If the world is a mirror, so like if you've always seen just one part of the world and you've always seen one part of yourself, you got to go all the way around and learn it all. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's really what it is. It's a, it's a self inquiry, self discovery practice traveling. Um, there's so much of the world that I have yet to see and experience, and I look forward to the rest of my life and fulfilling on that. And I've been blessed to have a lot under my belt so far. Um, but, you know, the world is beautiful, and there's so much that the world has to offer and teach you. And it's like, why would you ever not want to travel? I don't, I don't want to get that. <laughs> but, I think as we expand, too, through our life experiences, we are able to offer more and more. As far as perspective and guidance, and both of us are coaches. You know, we coach people through, through life. And um, anytime we can enhance our experience and knowledge, um, viscerally, emotionally, physically, I think is a benefit to people who seek yeah. us out. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, <clears throat> if you're not... The, you, you, of course, I'm, I'm talking about you learning about yourself, but what's also happening is you're learning about other cultures, and we live in a world now that's so diverse and eclectic that if you can identify with a certain cultural group, then you can identify with a person from that group and possibly connect with them. Um, so, yeah, it is like you're gaining more and more tools to connect with more and more people. The more you travel, the more you experience different cultures, different foods, different musics, different neighborhoods, different vibes. I know you're just kind of stepping into your journey as a coach and I'm wondering what your, your, your demographic or target market would be. What, what kind of coaching aligns with who you are and um, that you're trying to help people and assist people um, with? in their lives. Do you have anything specific or? I think uh, I, I didn't have anything specific and as I heard you speak, I, it kind of became apparent to me what it was. Um, I think my ideal person is someone who is ready to make a shift in their life from the norm, from the corporate world, from living. That's powerful. Yeah, oh my God. Uh, doing a life that they don't really feel fulfilled by and yeah. they're ready to step into a life that they do feel fulfilled by a life that they feel authentic and energized and excited about. And that could be starting a business. It could be, you know, not working at all. You know, who knows? Right. But there's a shift that needs to happen. And so I'm there to maybe facilitate that. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And that may look like a small business startup or it may look like I need to get myself out of this position. So what are the goals I need to have to do this? Or how can I systematically do this? And I, I, that's kind of what I'm working That's at. so powerful. That's so powerful. I think the biggest thing that, that we can offer is to help people actually get out of their mind. Yeah, because they're so used to thinking. And the Overthinking, mind. complicating everything going on in their lives. Yeah. So it's almost like having to delete some programs that I've been running. You know, I like the analogy of creating momentum in the direction that you do want. You know, we have momentum going in the direction that we don't want. Let's create the momentum in the direction that we do want. And eventually, you'll be off and running and you will never right. get back. It's the same amount of energy, right? So you, it's just where you're focusing it, yeah, right? That absolutely. can change the outcome, mm -hmm. everything else. What's, what's next for you, Bob? And you've had this beautiful unfolding in your life. You've got a beautiful son who I adore. <laughs> he's three. He's three, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, a beautiful woman in your life, a beautiful practice. You have become the master of manifestation mm. and creation. Thank you, Wendy. I, 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 it's nice to be reminded about that because uh, desire never stops as well. You know, so you, you, you manifest these things and it takes a practice to remember that, hey, these things that I have now were things that I used to have. So I got to be grateful for them and acknowledge yeah. myself for them. And then, uh, yeah, be, be, make sure I stay in that grounded space of gratitude. Yeah. For what, do you, what do you think is the magic some people, for some people, that is so elusive. They're not able to really attract what they, what they desire and want to create in their lives. What do, you, what do you think is working for you? There's something there. Yeah, you know, I think it's the conversation that you or I are continuously having about being versus yeah. doing. <clears throat> That's what it is. It's like, okay, well, how do I just be, Bob? Go practice. Go meditate, quiet your mind, quiet your thoughts. Go do something that your mind shuts down in. So then your yeah. the mind creates resistance, like a bubble that keeps those desires away. Right outside so of so much resistance. Yeah. Always you start, quiet the thoughts. The bubble releases, and things just float into your life. But you can't try too hard. You just have to let it be. And yeah. I think that's, that's that's a common thing for a lot of people. Is that that practice of shutting down the mind and trusting that everything will come to you if you just allow it. So the practice is called practice of allowing <clears throat> the art. Yeah, yeah. And also there are people who have a difficult time finding the silence, but you can actually get to that same, I think, vibrational space when you're creating. So if you're drawing, or you're playing music, or you're lost in nature, you're hiking, you're swimming, you're kayaking, you're there can also be a very zen place and connected place frequency that you can reach through movement or creativity as well. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are freaking out going, I can't meditate. You know, there's other ways to. Yeah. Meditation. To that. like a that's where who's in the zone cutting hair is meditating. Right. If you're washing the dishes and you're feeling the water molecules and you're giving appreciation for the water and the dishes and the food you just ate, that's meditation, I think. It's not about this, it's not possible. I mean, it is, but there are people like, oh, I'm gonna sit down and meditate and all the thoughts are gonna go out of my head. No, that's not true. You're gonna hear a thought, let it pass by like a cloud. If you hear a, a, a fly or the clock ticking, let that be. It doesn't mean that it can't be for you not to meditate. So it's a practice. But meditation has been very powerful. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people who are looking to Come more into alignment with their truth and they just really don't know where to begin. They don't know where to start. They're kind of lost. They know they, they need to make a change, but they're not sure mm. what to do because people kind of get stuck in this loop or behavior pattern or whatever it is. And they know that what they're doing is not aligning with them, but they're not really sure how to step out of this rut, so to speak, or pattern. Yeah. I think if I had just a moment to share anything and it had to be quick, I would be like, ask yourself what your passion is. Okay. I'm, I'm, well, I don't even know what I'm passionate about. Someone might say, well, cool. Let's, let's just think about that for a while. And then are you doing what makes you passionate? Are you spending any time doing what makes you, what you feel passionate about? <laughs> so if you don't have your passion, identify it. And it's usually right under your nose. It's something that you've always kind of been interested in or doing. Identify what the passion is, and then spend a little bit more time doing it. A little bit more time, a little bit more time. It's a great place to get started. Taking the first step. Awareness is the first step. So if you're actually aware that you're not in alignment, you've already taken the first step. You know, that's huge, having an awareness. And yeah. Then, you know. Acknowledging, hey, something doesn't feel right. I'm not in alignment. Like, there's got to be something else. What do I do? Great. That's a perfect spot. You're in a great spot. Exactly. Maybe go exactly. do your passion for a little bit. Connecting with nature, being out in nature, also very, very good Huge. for us. Very powerful. Very powerful, for sure. Do you have, I, I know that we've all, you can't go through life without overcoming adversity. 
so I'm wondering what has been one of your biggest tools to overcoming or working through difficult times that are presented in your life? I think you froze, Bob, and for a second. Well, I was just <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was being really still. You were very still. Yeah. Good. I'm glad uh, you were able to take a moment. I think that is the answer. Is is that right there? Is this to uh, be still. Come back to meditation. Come back to yourself. And what you'll find is that infinite well of love. And that will probably and usually reassure you that, hey, look, everything's going to be okay. And this will soon pass. And there's something to learn from this. You know, these are the lessons that are cliche, but they're true. Because if everything is happening for us, then let's learn from it and celebrate all of this. That was my universe, you know, from the university. Celebrate all the things that are not great, too. Because you're learning from them and you're growing. And they're making you who you want to be and they're taking you on the path of where you want to go. Yeah. Celebrate that. If you can imagine if you can get to a place where you're celebrating the things that you label as negative or bad, then life is what? Full of joy and bliss and cheer. Mm -hmm. that, so, so yeah, I get that. If you're having a bad time, it's hard for you to hear those words. But my advice humbly would be to be still. If you haven't started a practice of meditation, start working on meditation. And like I said, it can be different. It could be hiking, it could be boating, it could be air dressing, it could be you know, making jewelry, whatever it is. Right, right. Get in the zone. Get in the zone, right, where time doesn't exist. And you know when they say uh, time flies when you're having fun, that's a true thing. It's like you're involved with what you're doing and next thing you only know, wake up and it's like, oh my God. Yeah, that's when you know you're doing it right. But some right. People, dancing some people might be playing music or listening to music or playing with a child or going for a walk or just like if you can't find your passion ask yourself what helps you forget time yeah that's such a great that's such a great um suggestion so man this has been so awesome i'm so glad you were able to spend some time with me today i am probably gonna wrap this up shortly but i wanted to find out from you what your you know what are what are your goals where, where are you heading do you have a sense yeah you know as uh, i'm shifting from this young man into a full-grown man still obviously yeah. a dad now and responsible yeah. for someone else and yeah. um he my son is is a, is a big priority for me and i feel like a lot of the things that I do are for him um, and, and to set him up for his life and to teach him because I feel like he's a healer too and a light worker as well and he's already doing that work and I just want to continue to uh, facilitate that for him. So it's really about creating an environment for him, for him to thrive in that world and that means exposure to lots of culture and travel sure. and positive sure. vibe and lots of love and whatever that looks like. And, and for me, a lot of that is a, a beautiful home and a family environment. So that is like a goal for me is to create that for him. Um, and then just to, to be able to have myself in a space where I can continue to impact more and more people and to do more and more work like this, where it's full time. Um, I, I, would, I, <clears throat> I have a dream of having a, a healing center or healing centers around the world. And healing, I mean, you know, it's like a sacred space for people to come and heal, whatever it looks like. And multifunctional, it could be food, it could be substance abuse, it could be music therapy, it could be, uh, you know, all these different things, but like in a beautiful location, like a resort style. Absolutely. Yeah, sanctuary. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Beautiful. So I beautiful. have that dream, of, you know, to create those around the world. Um, and we'll see what that looks like. I don't know what it's going to look like yet. I mean, I do have a vision in my head, but... I also have to let go of that. I can tell you it'll probably be far more beautiful than you can envision. Wow, because it's really beautiful already. I know, because that's <laughs> how life works, you know? It's like you're having this incredible day, and you go, how can it get any better than this? And then, boom, the wow. universe just drops something even more amazing, amazing. in, you know? Yeah. So be open. 
<clears throat> I am. open to the possibility. I, I really try not to place limits on myself on what's coming. Right, yeah, yeah. that's a practice in, in and of itself. You know? Yeah. I want, I want uh, all this abundance, but I'm like limiting it to one channel? No, no, no. I'm open and receptive to all forms of prosperity and good. Yeah. You know, yeah, up. and then you just open your arms and allow that. Yeah. Magic to come in. You allow yourself to receive and be in the flow, you know. Right, reception and allowing. Those are the work. Yeah. yeah, I think people too need to realize that they are all worthy. It's right. not like one person is more worthy of something than another. I think every person needs to start to own who they are and know that they are beautiful. They That's are talented. They are worthy of everything, you know? Yeah. And I mean every, everything, not just settling. You know, so many people settle, go, well, you know, it's a job. Well, you know, it's a, it's a house. Well, you know, it's a relationship, even though it's not really... Fulfilling. The systems right. in place condition that so they can have you work for them to just settle. So we have to right. uncondition that stuff because you're helping them fulfill on their dreams when your dreams aren't being fulfilled. Right. So that's fine. Okay, cool. Everyone has that has that wake up moment. And just know that because you're here on the planet, you're worthy. And you're worthy enough to breathe and you're worthy enough to experience all of your dreams and desires and joy and abundance. So that's a good place to start. Absolutely. And you've survived to this point. You're far more resilient than you think you are. You've been all the time. You've yeah. been through it, man. You've been through a lot. So Absolutely. if you have, you know, survived life to this point and this density and through the adversity that's presented, you can do anything. Yeah, I love that. I love that message. I tell it to people all the time in the tough times. I'm like, look, you've been through a lot. You survive. Things are always working out for you, aren't they? Yeah, that's not going to stop tomorrow. It's not stopping right. now. It's right. going to continue working out for you. Yeah, yeah. Have, have faith in it, you know. Yeah. Believe in yourself. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All good. Well, Bobin, it's been such a pleasure uh, sharing this this hour with you. Do you yeah. have any anything you'd like to add to be complete? I mean, we have such a beautiful audience, and I know you have so much wisdom. I, I'm just, I want to first of all express my gratitude for you and your inclusion in your, in your work. I, I love you and I love the work that you're doing and I feel uh, grateful that I, that we manifested each other. I know. To you and so to share great. experiences with and we live not too far from each other. So yeah. that's really nice. I'm Thank really grateful you. for you and your work. Thank you. Anyone you know, here in Houston or around the world that wants to contact me for any reason, I'm totally open and receptive. And if I can be of help of service to them or you let me know I'm, that's what i'm here for so yeah we'll share all of bobbin's information at the end of the video and also his um his uh website so you can contact him if you have any questions or inquiries i highly recommend his work i want to thank all of you for tuning in it's always such a pleasure to share this time with you and to share the, the beauty of my guests on my show. So I hope you're going to be kind to yourselves. Know that I love you all and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you. Namaste. Bye. Namaste.